Welcome to the CBC YouTube channel where we talk about making custom car parts. Whether it's 3D printing or just taking a grinder to it. In today's video we'll be drawing this little block off plate for the 96 through 8 Honda Civic for the clock. Open up a new design and click create sketch and select the bottom plane and rotate to the top view. Do the R key and in the top right hit center rectangle to switch. And grab some measurements. Drag out that center rectangle, set each side to 70.6 and 44.6. Another quick measure and we come up with 5 millimeters for the thickness or depth. Then right click on the face and create a new sketch. Use the O key or the top, hit the offset tool and go in 3 millimeters. Then we'll measure from the bottom of the plate to the center of the hole and draw a line up from that side, set it to construction. Use the L key or click on line to start the line. Set another line to come vertically at 15.5 millimeters. And use the collinear constraint on that line and the side of our block. draw a line out to the side that'll be where the center of that circle is for the screw hole and that measures out at six and a half millimeters and we'll go from the center of that screw hole to the center of the stud which comes out to 10 millimeters and then draw two circles it'll be the holes for the screw and for the stud to go through and measure our stud and the screw. We want to make sure it's big enough for the screw to pass through. So measure the outside and give a little bit of extra space. We'll give 3.8 millimeters for the stud and 5.5 millimeters for the screw. I had another line down from the top. Kind of guessed to start out, but I found 7 millimeters worked pretty good. Then we'll add another line and make sure it's non-construction type. And set the three lines equal to each other since they're needing to be the same for the height of our arm. And L key again, make another line to connect the two for the side. Set the dimension for that to 20 millimeters. That should give enough space for the screw and the stud to have a little bit extra on the flange. And we'll set this arm to come out 12 millimeters. And we'll bring a line up and from the side to box this in. And we'll use the T key or the trim tool to take off the excess up top. Your lines should both have this horizontal constraint. Now that we've got everything drawn up for the arm and the flange, we're gonna add some lines perpendicular to each other off the circle to the sides and add a horizontal vertical constraint. And that constraint will make it so that the circle is on the same plane as the flange. And I'll just draw up this other side real quick and then show you what I mean. Okay. 
we click in the center of the flange and then in each circle it shows that they're separate object because they're on the same plane or if we come to this side we can see that this circle and this plane on the flange are different so it doesn't recognize that the circle is part of that flange so we need to go in and redo our line and set it so it's perpendicular to the other one and has the horizontal constraint and we're just going to ignore the left side is not fully constrained you want to get it all black and locked in with the dimensions like the right side is i'm going to make sure the sketch is visible then hit the e or push extrude and go down three millimeters then come in and select this interface on the right side you'll see extend type 2 object and select the side and go ahead and repeat for the opposite side. I'll go ahead and select all those top faces and this is where we see that having those circles constrained to that plane now it makes the hole automatically. So we have our basic shape we can go ahead and round the corner so it matches the trim piece. I made these little 3D printed tools so I can measure the fillet or radius on parts that I'm drawing. Looks like we got three millimeters so we'll go ahead and put that fillet on the outer edge of this piece. And just to make it look nice we can go ahead and add a fillet on the inner edge as well as the corners for the arms just to make it look a little bit nicer. Generally I'll go half of what I do on the outside edges but you can do whatever you want. Now the part's complete you can go in and add text on the front or back or make another hole in the center of it if you want to use it to mount a GoPro or make a phone mount. In the upper left hand there's a drop down for the body you can right click that go down to save as mesh you can upload it and I'll just assume you know how to use a slicer. If you want me to make a video on that, comment below. Turn on our printer. I messed up the time lapse for the print, so I'll have to figure out how to do that on the next video. And we can take our part, break off the supports, and see how it fits. Wow.